welcome back. We are finishing up our Scandi Bloom cowls this week, and in this technique video for today, I'm going to show you how to Kitchener and graft the end here in the round, and how you can finish that off pretty seamlessly, and then block it and be happy. Now, mine is a little bit um, rough yet. I have not had a chance to block it yet, but I will. But what follows is how to Kitchener everything together. Okay, before we get to that, I wanna give a hearty shout out and a big thank you to two new patrons that joined in the last week or so. Thank you so much to Britt and Laurel. I really appreciate your support. If you wanna head over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together and see what I'm offering for your small monthly pledge, head over there. It includes things like discounts on events, patron knit night, patron only videos, behind the scenes kind of stuff. Let's get started with grafting our tube of our cowl together. Okay, I've knitted a few more stripes than the pattern called for just because I wanted a little bit longer, but you'll want to end your regular knitting with just one row of the contrasting color because when we do the Kitchener in this light color, or if you're doing the contrasting in the dark, that's fine too. But we're gonna end the Kitchener in this contrasting color because when we join, join that up, we already have two rows of the dark here. So the idea here is to take this end of the tube and join it to this end of the tube. However, the first thing we need to do though is take our, our waste yarn or your cable or your barber cord or whatever you have chosen to use and replace this with an actual working needle. So in my case, I have one of these barber cords, which is a, it's basically like a little silicone tube. And so what I'm going to do is take the tube. Um, I'm using another fixed needle, fixed circular needle that is the same size as what I have going on the other end. So I'm taking the barber cord tube and jamming it on here as, as far as I can because That'll create some suction when I pull on it, and then I'll be able to gently pull on this other side, hopefully, and you know, work with it a little bit, and be able to pull my needle through and around. So I'm just gonna fuss with that a little bit. I don't wanna pull too hard. I'm just gonna work that around carefully and draw my needle through. Really the most difficult part is just getting it started. Once you get the connection going, it's pretty slick and it's pretty easy to slide everything onto your working needle. Okay, I just estimated approximately where halfway was to uh, make my magic loop. It's probably a little off and it's not a big deal. I can adjust that later. So this is the side where I began, where my barber cord was, or you might have waste yarn or again, a different cable. So now you'll notice I have my needles coming up here and this is where my I stopped knitting and I didn't really think about it too much. So what I need to do is shuffle this around so that my needles are pointed downward because if you'll notice in the pattern, you wanna have, we're gonna do a half, we're gonna do a twist, a Mobius twist. So we want our needles to be opposite at this point. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and I just need to uh, shuffle things around halfway is all. All right, now I've got my other end arranged here with, um, I counted my stitches and I have my magic loop in half. You might be using two circulars or just one circular needle, that's the proper size. So do whatever you need to there to make that work. But you'll notice that I have these needles pointed up now and these needles pointed down. Or actually I'm gonna do that vice versa so that I have my stripes pointed up, the beginning of my project pointed down because then what we're going to do is rotate. So now I've got this half a twist in here, which is what we want. And now both of the needles are pointing up as indicated in the pattern. So what we need to do now is turn things carefully. So we have our, our working yarn here. Here's our, our loop. Here's where we ended up knitting right here. Now we have two colors in this situation. So we're gonna do the Kitchener grafting with the lighter color, which is my contrast. You might have a different your darker could be your contrast and that's fine. And then the other one I've already cut. Now this one, I wanna measure approximately four times the circumference of my project to make sure that I have enough yarn to do the weaving in and out and to do the Kitchener grafting with. So I want to measure at least four times the circumference. So I'm gonna, there's one, one and a half, 
two, two and a half, three, you get the idea. Okay. And then I always add a little more for good measure. Now I know that's going to seem like a lot, but we're going to put it on our darning needle and fold it in half and it'll be much better. All right, so we're wet, ready to begin grafting. I don't, I don't usually do the setup row on the Kitchener, and you don't need to. You don't want to do that when you're Kitchener grafting in the round, anyway. One thing you you do want to do, however, is get a couple of these pear-shaped uh, progress keeper stitch markers. You can use safety pins. You can use the plastic ones that snap. But you want to go ahead and put that into the first stitch, and that will help us later once we get all the way around and finish. That will help us later. Um, so I'll show you why that is in a few minutes, but I like these because they're thin. The plastic ones are a little bit bigger. You can certainly use those. They're just not as easy to deal with and they're harder to get around. However, be careful with these since they're pokey and sharp, you don't want to split a stitch. So just put these progress keeper pear shaped things on the first stitch of each of these outside needles. And you'll see why when we get all the way around here. So the first thing we're going to do is go in as if to knit, and we're going to take that stitch off. So remember your Kitchener mantra is knit off, purl on. So we're going to purl into this one with our really long yarn and leave that on. And now on our back needle, we're going to purl off, purl into that one, take it off, and then knit into the next stitch and leave it on. Now, if you haven't done the Kitchener before, I do have a video that's solely dedicated to that that goes a little bit slower. One way you can remember this is you're going to start, like if you get called away and you need to set this down and you don't remember where you were, the needle, you can tell the, the yarn is coming off the back here, so you know you ended on the stitch in the back. And you need you know, you know always know you need to begin with a knit stitch going in as if to knit if the knit side's facing you. That's how you start. You go in and knit that off. Okay. Whoops. I've got this um, hung up around my other working needle. So the needles that you're not working on, see if you can just pull those out of the way a little bit so it's less bunch, less cluttery, if you will. Okay, so knit off, take that first stitch and slip that off the needle. The next one is purling on. So you're gonna go in as if to purl and leave that on. And again, I'm hung up around this other needle. That's all right. It gets easier as you get more of them done. And then I know that if I get called away right now, I know that I can see that this is coming out the front, so I must have just purled and left that on. And this next stitch needs to be a purl off and then knit on. So purl that one, take it off, go in as if to knit and leave this one on. We're just gonna go all the way around this way until we get to the end. And then I'll show you what you need to do. Okay, so one more time. One more time, go in as if to knit, and we're gonna take that stitch off. I like to have things a little bit closer to the end so it's easier to slip that stitch off. So go in as if to knit, take that stitch off. You can just snug that up a little bit. Go in the next one as if to purl, leave that one on. And on the back needle, go in as if to purl, purl off, knit on. All right, I'm going to go all the way around and I'll be back with you shortly. All right, I finished my Kitchener going all the way around and you can see that that's just going to need to be blocked. It's a little bit wonky because of my tension, but I think it'll block out and be just fine. It's pretty seamless and it looks good. So now I'm going to go and finish my Kitchener using these two pear-shaped markers. This one goes to the back. This one goes to the back because it's the dark yarn. So you would just pretend that this is a stitch on your needle, and this is to the front because it's the light-colored yarn. So we're just gonna go in as if to knit, just like we normally would with the light 
contrasting color in the front, just like we normally would, in as if to knit, and we'll take that off. Hang on to your other needle though. And then we're gonna go in as if to purl on this one. And that is how we'll finish off. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in as if to purl there and remove this marker. All right. And then on my back needle goes in as if to purl, just like we would, and take that off. Smoothing everything out. I have a weird loop here. And then I'll go in as if to knit on this last one. Then I can begin doing some duplicate stitch and weaving in my ends. And we have finished up. So let me show you. Let me straighten all this out and show you how this will look. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and trim the extra from there, get my darning needle back, and decide how I want to deal with this. So, as you can see, there's my stitch, my last stitch here, and my last stitch here. And then I also have, um, on the other side, I've got some weaving in to do from my tail ends over here. So I'll be working on that and then I can block it. So I'm just gonna do some duplicate stitch and weave that in. And I can show you that real quick. If you're not familiar with duplicate stitch, I'll show you how I'm gonna work on that. Duplicate stitch is just how it sounds, where you're gonna go up through, and then I'm following along right where this stitch, right where this stitch is right here. So I'm gonna go up under both legs of this blue stitch, being careful not to catch the fabric. Uh, being careful not to catch the fabric of the other side of my cowl. And you're just following the path of where that yarn goes. So I'm just gonna weave that in. Alternatively, if you want to, you can just go in and out underneath a couple of times and call it good. So you can decide how you want to do that. Um, it is neater, I think, to try to do some duplicate stitch. Then, after I get finished with that, I'm gonna, t just because I can't wait, I wanna see how this all looks. Obviously, I need to weave in my ends, but hooray. There we go. I hope you've enjoyed this project as much as I have. Please remember to post your finished objects over in the Ravelry group. We're going to be gathering up some prizes for finished objects, and you'll hear more about that in the future podcast that I'll do. You have until at least the 15th of July, so it's not too late to go ahead and knit your own, even if you haven't started yet. So thanks for watching and joining us for the knit along. Head over to the Ravelry group. The link is down below in the video description.